it's Sarah and I'm doing some claying. I've been working on these. Now look, look how soft. I just bought this. It's called Elephant Gray. I'm pretty sure. Sculpey. It's so soft. Look, I can just, it's too soft actually. I should probably put, you know why? I left it in the car. <gasps> now I'm, I'm just, I just realized that. So I might have to wait. Maybe I'll do a, I'll do something else while I'm waiting. Maybe I'll go stick it in the fridge because it's a little too soft. I mean, look, if that's all you have to do to condition your clay, that's not bad, but <laughs> usually it takes a bit more than that to, this one's, this one feels okay. I'm going to stick this in the pasta machine. Um, I'm working with the Tim Holtz mini cats and dog stamps and then I actually pulled out um, a couple of lawn fawn stamps as well this one's called critters at the dog park there's five different doggies on there that I actually I just stamped out um, and they're baked so I'm going to show you what I do with them but the first thing you want to do now I just went and wanted to see what other color clay there was that I could use for uh, dogs because at first I did them with the mica powders and I love them I do I happen to love mica powders and I think they're super cute but because I press so hard into the clay well I, I do everything hard but um, you lose some of the detail from the stamp. So like for instance, here's this little guy. Let me zoom in. Okay, so look how different they look because the, all of this gets impressed into the clay. It distorts the, the picture because then if you look at him like this, where I just printed him with ink, it's, you see all the detail of the stamp which I love better. This is all done with mica powders, uh, Perfect Pearls. And this one is just stamped into the clay, then I bake it, and then I painted it, and then I put stickles in the background. That's why it's shiny, and I don't know if I love that. And the person I'm thinking about for this, I think I'm gonna make a frame with these doggies. I don't know if he'll appreciate all the glitter. So maybe one or two of them. But basically, I want to I want to see this again. See, this is just too soft. I'm gonna try this side. Oh my gosh. I don't think I'm gonna be able to work with this. I mean, let me try it because I'm impatient and I don't feel like going to the um, refrigerator. I'm gonna put it through the pasta machine and see what happens if I can work with it. It's super soft, but let me show you what I've been doing. So I think I want to make a gray, this guy, and this guy. These were the two that I want to do again because I only had three colors. So I'm going to do him and him and gray. Um, anywho, <laughs> I figured, I mean, I don't know if there's that many gray dogs really. I haven't seen very many, but it is a color that I can use. So anyway, all right, so this is my brown stays on. It's called Timber Brown. And you actually stamp it with ink, gently. You don't want to impress it. You don't want to press it into the clay and get the impression. Now this is so soft, chances are, it, oop, no, I'm not in the shot, sorry. Chances are it will because the clay is so soft. But I'm hoping I just get there, the image stamped. Now, the tricky part will be you take your blade, because this is so soft, it's tricky. Otherwise, it's not as tricky. You just want to gently remove it from the big tile, and then I'll put it on a little tile to bake. All right, so that looks good. See, it's not that bad. Then, I just eyeball it and I will cut a straight line on the bottom and just go perpendicular to that 
and then turn it around because when you eyeball you want everything to be as straight as you can um, perpendicular and sticky it's just sticky but it's so sticky so this is how I create tiles because see look I just you really he got lost in the dark clay so I like that better I think that's going to show up better um, I've been painting the background blue but, oh look there's a I lifted up the stamp and it fell back down so I got a double print there so I just flipped it over but I don't think the dark color did this stamp justice because he's just little but I think this one looks much better Let's see if it looks square to me um, this looks a little oh gosh that is sticky all right so I'm gonna lift it up I'm gonna set it on a different tile to be baked let me put this through the pasta machine and we'll do this guy he's so cute did I do him in a different color no so I think this gray It'll, I don't know, I think that that dark brown was just a little too dark to show some of the detail. So I'm hoping, we'll see what he looks like in gray. Super soft. So let's get him on here. And this is the first time I've tried doing this with uh, a different color ink as well. Even though it's brown, it's not that different. Still a dark. So I'm gonna go toward the bottom because that had bubbles in it. And I might have double stamped a little because I tapped it down. I'm not putting too much pressure. I just want to make sure it gets a nice impression. Yeah. So cute. Alright. So then I have to loosen this up. And we'll cut. Perpendicular. So I just go up. Try and keep it as straight as I can. And same thing on the sides. And I don't leave a lot of clay if I can help it because I want the doggy to be the center stage. Um... But yeah, I think the gray might be good for him. And that way, it just gives more. So I have white dogs, dark dogs, lighter dogs, and then the tan dogs. These are so cute. I know they're not in the shot. Hold on. And then just some gray dogs. So I will bake those. And then the next thing, um, let's see. Do I want to do... Let me just do one with this color. See, this is called a crew, I think, yeah. And I use this. So they're very similar, but I want to do one or two in this color too. And I'm, I'm just kind of conditioning it a little more, yeah. And then I'll roll it out. Let's see. I want to do the tall He's so cute, but I think maybe this guy, how cute is he? I'm going to do him. And that's the thing. So then I decided, well, they're so big. How am I going to make a mosaic? Because I, I like to use, and I just went and got a couple more of these dollar picture frames. And I like to use these. To do my mosaics and those tiles are so big so I thought I went really I went to see if I could find a bigger frame I went to Michael's and Joann's and I didn't have any luck so I guess I'll hit AC more next time I'm out that way um, what am I doing this guy and um, but these freaking drawings the stamps are so cute I mean come on they're so cute and so I know 
this person that I'm thinking of, my neighbor, um, he loves doggies, and I think he would really, really love this. And so gently, I love it. They're so cute. Thank you, Tim Holtz. These are so cute, so I'm going to do... And then I did stamp out um, some, there were dog bones and dog food bowls in the set. I did those, so I'll bake him too. So cute. So let me see this. And the thing is, you won't see, you'll only see the dog. He's a tad different. But um, I might as well try it. So I'll come back to that. The next thing I would do, see I should at least do one more, sorry. I think maybe I'll do one of these little guys. He's so cute. I'll do him. Let's see. Oh no. I'll do either a hot dog. I'll do the hot dog. Now see the difference? These are the um, lawn fawn stamps. They're just, there's no shading lines or anything. It's just the drawing part of it is so simple that, but I still think, whoops, I still think they work together okay. It'll be, in the, in the composition, I think it'll be okay. So this is, when I am conditioning my clay, I do this a lot. I just use a roller get it to squish down and then I put it through my pasta machine and just keep going. It's, then you fold it over, go through again, fold it over until it gets soft and it is, it's starting to get soft. And you could do that again. I mean my hands aren't that strong. They're probably, you know, average. Keep putting it through here, folding it and putting it through. All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna. We'll do a little hot dog. What's that? A dachshund, right? I saw um, something on Facebook. It was a corgi and husky mix. So it was a bit bigger corgi with blue eyes. OMG, he was so cute. See these? These don't stamp as well. The polymer, um, these are the, let's see. They're called clear photopolymer stamps. And so what I've noticed is they don't stamp out as well onto the clay. And listen, they're not meant to stamp on clay, but I've had that the whole time. I ended up going back and re-stamping these. These two I totally re-stamped and I got a, I think the second time might be the way to go. So you know what? I'm going to fold this over and we're going to try it again. Because I think the second time... The ink may adhere better to something. Something's going on. So let's try it one more time. Why not? That didn't, it didn't. I like a nice solid line, so that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I re-stamped three of them, which is a pain in the butt because I already cut them out. I was ready to bake them, and then I was just like, yeah, I don't like it. So let's just gently give pressure. See, it's not that great, but I'm going to keep it. I think it's solid enough. He is so cute. I'm trying to make, get this eyeballing. There we go. 
and all right so the next thing you would have to decide so at this point this is when I would use my mica powders before they're baked that's when I like to do mica powders they stick to the wet to the the moisture of the clay well it's not wet but it's tacky you know so the mica powders really and then you bake them and they're kind of baked in I consider them baked in but for this I want to do I'm gonna paint them so I'm gonna bake these and I'll, I have these that I um, baked earlier and let me just clear off a little spot on my desk because I love these these are so cool but but like I said you just don't get the same detail like look him and him and you know it's to each his own you know it's personal preference but this looks like a drawing and this looks this looks I don't know maybe it's more clay like so anywho uh, this is what I would do next so if you hear another crash it's because my tile is gonna fall so let me bring in my painting palette and move this stuff out of the way and let's go with now I can you can feel this is so smooth and slick so it kind of almost makes me want to sand it and I haven't ever done that yet and then I would worry that I would pull off even more like this one I really pushed hard and you can see it's in Bedded in the um, clay a lot more but all I'm gonna do is take straight this one's called whispering turquoise it's just a light blue and I'm gonna base coat and it takes about two to three coats depending on the color of the clay so on the lighter color clay I may be able to get away with um, I'm just looking for like my small round brushes I put everything away that'll be good I'm pretty much pulling all the water out of my brush too I don't want it too super wet and let's just do him he's super cute you know my hands are getting like my rings are just rolling around on my hands it's annoying uh, anywho my hands are shrinking so I'm loading my brush oh, you can't see me doing it really loading it up and then I'm just going to fill in the background. I'm going to try not to get it on the, um, the brown line because I like that. And I'm not painting him. If anything, I will just shade a little bit. I did a tiny bit of shading on the other guys. I'll show you. And like I gave them cheeks, a little pink in their ears stuff like that like the hot you know they the other ones have collars on so I painted their collars and uh, basically left them the color of the clay and that was my intention I I didn't like that I didn't have um, mica powders that are the color and somebody I forget who it was mentioned and I shoot I was right near the dollar store too I could have gone to get and I probably have some old eyeshadow I don't wear eyeshadow very often anywho that is where you're gonna find your browns right so when I did these I used copper I think that's like a a russet color cup but it's metallic there weren't very many like this is silver but because it's light it kind of looks like blackish like a gray almost so but see look so here's just the background and now all of a sudden he stands out so then let's see how it takes on this darker clay sometimes you'll see the the paint actually start to bubble up because it doesn't want to 
grab onto the clay. Now this one's definitely embedded. The, Im the image lines are in into the clay, so I can almost go over them and it doesn't even cover them because they're down inside the clay. Anywho, um, yeah, so this is covering pretty nice. It's not, see how I just went, I messed up. See how I went in there? I don't want to do that. I get, I get hasty and um, impatient. And that's the thing, if you um, want your piece, your finished piece to look professional and impressive and, you know, all those good things, you're, you're going to want to take your time and you're going to want to put as much love and heart and effort into each piece, every stroke of the brush. You don't You don't want to rush. Just get it nice and zen. Be zen and do it. But yeah, see, I like that. But see, it's going to take a couple coats. Oops, I'm not in the shot. So I will go and I'll bake those. And basically that's it. Um, but I'll be back. You know what? Um, let me just show you then what I would do. So I don't know how... I'll do these since they weren't, um, I have out this color blue, this is asphaltum. It's just a brown deco art color. And my painting style, you know, you know me, those of you who watch my videos, I use the floating technique to do shading and highlighting. So I'm going to take my angle brush, put a little bit of water, but I'm pulling most of the water out corner loading the brush into the brown just a tiny bit of paint and then I'm going to put that color up against where I want it to look shaded so I'll put it under his chin around his head cool now I think I'm, I'm going to go around his muzzle but I think I'm going to put a little pink in his ears so I'll go around his muzzle here. I'll put a little pink in, oh, and then I gotta do this leg. This hind leg is behind. And this one is right here, there's some shadow too. And there could be some here and here. All right, let's get a little bit of pink. And I think I'm going to, you know what I did for their nose is I actually used charcoal instead of, or I'm sorry, graphite. Charcoal or graphite would be fine. And then I like put black just on the top for like shading. So that looked really cool. So let's put a little bit of pink inside his ears. I have a lot of paint on my brush. I don't do anything lightly, that's why. So let's put a little pink in here and here. Hopefully I'm in, yes. And then I could do his little cheekies. Give him a little cheek. See, I went out of the line. And what about, I think I have this other color. It's called Mendicino. It's just a dark uh, burgundy color. That's what I did um, kind of like inside their mouths and stuff. I'm just looking for my spotter. It's a tiny little, here we go. It really isn't very long or, it's a 10 slash zero, but it's very short bristles too. And this is what I use to do the, um, the centers of their eye, like the pupil in their eyes. But these guys are, all their eyes are closed. So let's do inside of his mouth. Oops, I just stuck my hand in the blue. And I'm going to do that graphite on his nose. I think there was a little water in my brush. 
but I'll go right up to the top and let me just come back and put um, the blue on the edge too so once you're done that I think that looks cute you know what I could do a tiny bit more brown up here on his ears And see, this isn't going to sh show up on some of the clay colors, like the, um, you know what, I should try painting one of the raw clay pieces and just see how it turns out. I don't know that I've ever done it on the raw clay, and the only thing is, I won't be able to get the paint off. That's probably, I don't want to do that, because if I once I put the paint down, it'll stick to it. I won't be able to rub it off, so I like having that option. This brush is getting toe up. See that? Uh, that's not good. But we're just painting a background, so let's see. So then, carefully, I like to try and get the ridges out as I go, like the ridges of paint. I don't like to leave, um, just makes for a smoother surface. That's my decorative painting roots because when you're painting on a, when you're generally in decorative painting, your surface was silky smooth. And so I've just gotten in the habit. That's why mixed media is so freeing and, um, you know, you can leave bumps and ridges, and it's even almost part of it to have that texture. So it, it is freeing for me to, ugh, this brush is a little hairy. It's not listening to me very well. Um, but for whatever reason, I, I tend to like it smooth, too. So it may just come down to personal preference and Sarah style, right? So this is where the techniques I've learned are all, I use them the how I see fit. And then, OMG, you know what? I saw the best video. Wait, I don't remember who sent this to me. It's called, um, but anyway, imitation is part of our culture. Art equals idea plus technique plus the person. I'm going to, I'll look into that and see who um, shared it with me. But it made me feel so good because I always say I'm a copycat. And, I, and it's just saying that imitation is part of culture. It ha it's fashion. It's everything. So I think the crafting community needs to lighten up and I think it's because these laws, yeah, there are laws to protect people, you know, who have logos and businesses, but art, it isn't meant to be copyrighted. You can't you can't say that you created this technique or, you know, it's it's and then it'll never come out the same. It's just inspired by. So and I believe that, I do. And it's not just that I am thankful to have heard it from that perspective, but it, it makes sense. And because we, we all gather our inspiration from different things, from nature, from things we see on a regular basis. And um, I don't know, I'll let you know. I'll let you, I'll direct you to that very informative video. It was very good. So alright, I'm just doing this because I want to come back and put another coat on one of those so that I can show you what the two coats look like. And also I should have shaded him before. Well just because it's easier for me to get my angle brush in there before all this um, paint. But yeah, look how cute he looks with his little shading. Um, what else? So that's basically it. Then once he has two coats of blue, at least, let's see how this looks. 
Yeah, then when I put the stickles, and I just use clear stickles. Stickles is um, glitter glue, basically. And I love that brand. It's by Ranger. But there's a lot of different glitter glues on the market. And um, I, I have used varnish, my, ugh, my regular painting varnish on tiles. And it, I think it tends to make them sticky. So I haven't been using it and I like the idea of um, stickles sealing it with its sparkle but then I'll um, use say a spray adhesive uh, Krylon I forget what the name is it's just a matte spray he got it all over his foot so I think two coats did pretty well covered coverage wise because then you could just put um, the stickles on and it makes it oh no and then I shaded around the edges with the darker color blue so let me sit that for to dry and let's go in and put some detail on him with the dark brown so it shows you kind of where to shade based on some of the lines. So like his hind leg would come up like that. And we could shade under his belly a little. And I mean it is clay so it's not looking perfect. I'm looking for my mop because I can kind of... I think I maybe I have too much water in my brush. And the, it just bubbles up on the clay. So here's another back leg. So I'm going to stick the color up against his body. We'll go around his ear. Kind of like, hmm. Uh, oh, this one's in the back. Let's go around his muzzle. And then maybe this side of his muzzle over here. And does he have any? See, he, his ears are laying down, so he doesn't really have any pink. But I can do. I'll go in front of it. And let's go behind it, too. It just gives them a little more movement, I guess, dimensionality, and makes it mine. So let's go here. This is the easy part on his hind legs. Tail. Muzzle. Around his muzzle. just because the water doesn't I don't know what happens to it it just sits on top of the clay um, this ear and a little bit here and I think like here on his chest and here on his belly kind of cute right did I do them all yes I did see on these on the Tim Holtz ones there was cross hatching lines and different like movement marks and eyebrows and everything it was so cute like I could do a little under here and they have collars on I mean they're just so cute Um, what else? Then their noses. So I'll use my little pointy I mean they're they're kind of boring color wise, you know. At least these guys I was able to put their collars. I made them bright yellow collars. 
The whites of their eyes even was fun because, uh, let's see, look at him. He's got little studs on his collar, and I just made them red. Mainly, I was using red and yellow as my accent. But, like, he doesn't have much, just his collar. And I made their, um, what is that, like, their, their licenses or whatever, their tags hanging down. I made them silver. So these are pretty basic, you know, really simple. I could highlight and, but look, he looks cute with his little pink cheeks. All right, let me give them pink cheeks. Just a hint. And let me see if he's ready for stickles. Oh, I want to go around it with dark. I have to go around it with the dark. Or, you know what? I didn't do dark. I did, so I was thinking I did Payne's Gray, but I did it with this and I did the Payne's Gray in the center. Oh, so I am nowhere near done. Um, let me just do the pink real quick. Ugh, I just got it in the brown. My pink's dry. I have fan fans on, so the pink gets a little, or any paint is going to get a little dry. And if you want it to stay, you got to leave it. Let it, don't touch it. Um, I just touched it because it was in the wrong place, and I can wipe it off. There we go. Oh, they're so happy, my little friends. Okay, and look how dark he is. See, he won't be the same. I won't be able to get as cute of a... Of a I could probably shade him with um, black, but I don't love them. And see, here's another one. Like, that's the thing. That's why I did the hot dog... And then I should have done him in a lighter color. But all right. Now, this is what I did with the Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is my shading colors. I use this all the time in my shading in my art journal, stuff like that. It's just a good, it's not black. It's like a really dark, dark blue. So I like it. And so I'm going to go on the darkest places in the shadows. So between his legs, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, you know, a little choppy, it's not perfect, but sometimes, I don't know, maybe I need to let go of that perfection thing and just let it be what it is. hard, isn't it? Because I can do it better and then I start to think I can do better. But that gives them a little shadow <clears throat> in the background. This still needs a second coat of blue. But then I did a little bit of this metallic, which it's not really necessary, I'm thinking, if I'm going to put the stickles on because the stickles will just... Um, the stickles is everything. It's just so pretty. But I'll show you what I did. So this is a metallic turquoise color. And it has like a pearlized um, texture or whatever. So I go right down the sides. And I don't really want it on him. So after you do it, you come back and kind of clean them off. And... I do both sides first, or opposite sides. And ch -ch -ch -ch, Q tip. So it just kind of adds that finishing touch. But like I said, see, I think there's even stickles somehow. How, how is it's just it's not it's not stickles. It's the uh, Uh, the uh, it's pearl peacock pearl all right you guys so that's basically it 
Um, I think I'm going to bake those. But then, see, here's what I was going to show you. After they're all done, and I'll just set this over here for a second. I would, I'm going to base coat this frame with, um, let's see. I think gold would look pretty. Um, a gold metallic background because that's what shows through the tiles what you see and then maybe even a dark blue would be nice for the background or black um, and then I kind of was playing around with this already look how that fits almost perfectly um, some of them will fit better than others but that's okay See, there's a little space there, but I'll put a piece of bling chain or some type of chain. Let's go with you over here. This little guy. Oh, he's too tall, see? He doesn't quite fit, so he'll have to go over here. So he can go on the side. And then these guys, let's see. I don't know if I can fit a couple of these guys, but I really want to try. And this is where the tricky part happens because, so he's pretty much ready to go. Um, you have to move things around. And then I also have some painted tiles. These are like geometric patterns that I already used in another. I just pulled these from my stash because I'm, I sit down and I make a bunch of these at one time. But I thought, oh, they're going to work with this. I love the blues. So here's the little dog bones that I did. I stamped them out. I don't love the... Um, I didn't finish them because I didn't love them. But this is a bowl of food. And then I have these little tiles. Well, let me show you these first. So then you're going to fill in with these all around. I really like to try and space everything. Mm -hmm. Let's try and put one here. Oh, that's a bone. So this one would be more difficult based on the size of the tiles. It's really a lot easier to get a good mosaic pattern going when you have smaller tiles um, because it just gives you more room, more room to manipulate and play. Um, that's Kiwi, my birdie. Anywho, then I had, look, this is what I want to show you. These are, I happened to be in Walmart yesterday, and I got these. This is just jewelry in the jewelry department. They had this little set of about 11 different charms, and I only made this many. I don't know. I think I have a couple left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did nine of them, so they're around here somewhere. I don't know where they are. Here. Uh, cousin. Designs by me charms and They're all doggy stuff. So I embedded them in the black clay Super simple to do because they're metal they won't melt so you won't have an issue and I did it on black because I just thought the black and silver Would work nice together that they would really pop and show up so then these can be used as little accent pieces so, and I would probably just do, you know, three or four. Like, you don't want to get crazy. So, two bones and two feet. Something like that. And then, I'm going to even do, um, see, and I got this at Michael's today when I went and got the clay. Uh, it's, it was $3.99 regularly, and now it's $1.99, but it's bling chain. So, and I love adding this, but for the dogs, I was actually thinking uh, some type of a more of a link chain would look cool because, you know, you, you, 
they have chain collars and different things like that so um, just covering up the people but anywho that's how I create and I think this is so cute like I am really I'm excited but like if I took off him because he's so big I, I hate that I did that because I love him I do I love him he's so cute because most of them are big I mean they're all kind of big then I could fit more of the littler ones on so I'll redo these are too dark I'm gonna use those that I just made with the light clay and what else there were a few other things in this um, there's a fire hydrant I rough you like I could just put some love in there I could put woof I could make things that say woof woof um, it says there's a little dog bowl this little paw I could have just put in the background of some of them like I could have put a dog paw right there there's a ball grass so this is for making a card but um, I'm gonna keep playing and I'll come back and share see I kind of like the black on the outside but see it doesn't fit if it doesn't fit what do you do you must have quit <laughs> anywho you make it fit you make it work so and then the other thing was I did love these dark blue colors as accents too and I went and got blue because I thought it would be the same and it's not and then that made me think well maybe I mixed colors to get this I mean it kind of looks the same on camera but it's really not this is called just blue in the Sculpey and then I have this is called I think it's like a turquoise yeah turquoise um, but I think it's too similar to the other clay but I, I might end up using this so then I'm still not done I have to make more filler tiles like I, can, I could probably just wing it and do it but I like to have too many tiles so that I do my best effort that I put my best effort into it see like these are three of the same color so I would probably put a dark dog here and a light one up here so you see what I mean it's just kinda I'll sit here and move things around for hours sometimes because I don't like I don't want too many of the same color but up against each other but he's too cute come on I mean I could make him smaller and just cut off his tail a little you know and that way he wouldn't be as overwhelming because there's really nothing going on over there so these are all options that I go back and forth and back and forth but I'll finish painting these and I'll just add them to my stash let's see if I can add stickles to him yet I'm just trying to finish this like tell you as much as I can without having to come back let me just put And then I really probably won't put stickles until everything's dry. Until you know it's dry and it, it's adhered as best it could be. My dog is crazy. So that's kind of what it looks like. Cute! Alright. Alright you guys, so that is one of the ways that I build a mosaic. By using stamping and painting. And if you go back in my my catalog of videos, which I have tons, you will see how I made these, the painted stamps. I mean, tiles, they're not exactly these, but they're done the same way. Um, I probably have videos of embedding metal into, into clay as well. So it's really all there for you. And then I think I even have videos of how I assemble a mosaic. And adhere them I use glue and so um, that's it All right you guys
Thanks for watching.